everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's uh, actually here, it's Monday night. It's No, it's Wednesday for you. If you're seeing this video, uh, I guess everything went okay. But um, what happened was uh, we got a big tropical storm coming, barreling our way. And tropical storms around this time of year can be pretty bad because a, a lot of the leaves are still on trees. So when you get the heavy winds uh, with the coupling the leaves on the trees, it's a lot of force on these old trees and you get a lot of uh, damage, things like that. Also, we have a uh, flooding issues and my, my gutters have, are full and I've been, uh, I have a, they're supposed to come clean them out. I don't do that anymore because it's a two person job and I'm working by myself. You need somebody to hold the ladder when you're up there about 50 feet. So uh, I'm waiting for, for them to come. And uh, so until then we get a little spillover and you know how it is when you own a home. But a um, couple things I want to get to today. It's going to be a pretty short video. But uh, one first thing I want to talk about is uh, we got a new shop mascot. Uh, Teddy is his name. My girlfriend named him and uh, named after Teddy Roosevelt, I, I'm saying. So uh, little Teddy, we found uh, he was abandoned a couple weeks ago under the porch. He's coming along good, feeding him formula, feeding him three, four times a day. And he's, uh, he's a little rambunctious guy. But what's really interesting is how I think they're his brothers. The, uh, the other cats took to him. They actually love this little guy. So uh, that's always good. So they're socializing with other cats until I can find a home for Teddy. And uh, I want to talk uh, first off is... Uh, you know, I, I sometimes I come down a little bit on Chinese products, you know, and it's not because I have any problem. You know, there are some Chinese manufacturers that are really putting out some good stuff, but the problem is there are a, a ton of them that aren't. So, you know, who, who's to know what you're getting? But the uh, one thing I wanted to uh, point out is uh, one of the items I bought years ago from uh Harbor Freight is uh, this little drain cleaner here. And if you're a homeowner or something, or if you have, I got, you know, almost 70 feet of uh, frontage here that uh, I have to keep clearing. And, you know, sometimes I got roots coming from the trees. They break through 100-year-old pipes. That's just uh, the way it happens. But let me show you this Now, this unit. is the unit that I was talking about here. This particular unit I bought about 10 years ago. And what it is, it's the Harbor Freight Snake or Drain Cleaner. And uh, I have to tell you something. I've, like I said, uh, over here, when you have a, a drain clog or something, it's over $100 every time they come. And, and uh, you know, this was under $200 when I bought it. So it's paid for itself 10 times over. I've used this dozens of times. I usually run through my uh, sewer once a year or so. Or, you know, hopefully I don't have to, but sometimes I do. And uh, let me show you some interesting things. First of all, it comes with a, a ground fault interrupter. Uh, the GFI, which you need for anything working with water. So we'll plug it in. Let me show you how Now, it these units are pretty simple because all you have is you have a, basically a motor here. And uh, there's a belt. It's belt driven. The belt goes around the drum. The drum holds the snake. And there's a little feed. Uh, this unit here will feed out the uh, the snake. So And you have different accessories that you could put onto the... Uh, onto the tip, you know, you have different uh, type of accessories that come with it that depending on what you're trying to get through. But let me show you how quiet it is. See, it's very quiet, works very well. And uh, I'm gonna show you how the uh, the drive mechanism works. Now here's a little foot paddle switch that you use that uh, to engage it. And uh, when you do it, when you push this up like this, it'll send the snake, feed it out this way. So it's almost like automatic feed. Uh, this is a neutral in the middle, and down there, it'll pull it back into the drum. So we're going to show you just how quick it comes out. I'm going to turn it down so you, uh, you're you not going to hear the volume, but this will feed out this way, and you'll see at what speed it does. Now, this is where I feel that Chinese products really shine, because if you think about it, the, uh, the cost of that uh, unit... Uh, it, you can replace the snake, you can replace the parts if you have any problem. It's a very simple unit, but um, if you went to buy this unit uh, new in a plumbing store, you know, like a commercial grade, it, you could, it'd be very uh, cost prohibitive. However, when you, you're dealing with something like this, a Chinese knockoff, like I said, I've had it 10 years, works great. And so not everything from China is really, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. And uh, when you don't pay a lot, you don't mind trying it out. Okay, next up, a uh, good friend of the show, Ben Kerfee. You know, he uh, he's having a lot of fun with his channel, Tool Addict. And uh, thanks very much for everybody for stopping by his channel. Uh, 
And if you've already been there, you know what I'm saying. He's, he really loves tools. And Ben sent this over, and a lot of people want to see this thing. What can we do with it? So uh, let's just talk a little bit about the miniature anvils for a minute. Now, miniature anvils have become quite the collectible. And I feel the reason that is is because it's a, it's a small and it's a... If you want to get into collectibles, I'll tell you right now, don't buy anything big. Big collectibles, the problem with it is people today don't have the room they did years ago. People years ago had basements, attics, things, garages. A lot of people don't have that today. They have apartments, and they maybe can put up a shelf in the apartment and display some collectibles. So they're not collecting big stuff anymore. So forget about, you know, collecting bicycles. Forget about collecting big stuff because people just, you know, you're, you're limit to how many people can buy it. Now, for some reason, these things, they used to be called salesman samples and a lot of times not to be confused with jeweler's anvils. Now, jeweler's anvils are actually meant to be used on a daily basis, things like that. And a lot of these anvils, although they can be used because they're cast iron and whatnot, um, they were really meant as salesman samples to put in the hardware store, things like that. And this way, you say, oh, you know, order me an anvil or whatever the case may be. But um, a lot of them, you know, they put out like this one here. This record is uh, put out in... You can see it was all painted, but we can do a little bit better than that. And uh, you can see the prices that some of these anvils get online. You know, they're they're quite the collectible, and they can go all the way up to hundreds of dollars. So before you go out and start collecting anvils and buying them, be careful before you spend a lot of money because these are so easily reproduced. So what happens is somebody gets an anvil like this, they make a mold of it, they pour it out, you're getting a cast iron anvil or a cast aluminum or cast something that might look the same, but they're not the same as they were made from the original factory where they used maybe a, a harder mix or a cast steel or something like that. So just be leery of that. Don't spend a lot of money and just buy what you like. So let's see what we can do with this. Now you know my favorite part, remember what this miniature anvil looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done, I ask you. Don't you think that looks better? I kept it in the original, I wanted to maintain the original color because that's records uh, color, you know, that, that deep blue. And uh, I was able to keep all the color but just polish up the surfaces that, you know, would normally be worn and, and used. and. Doesn't that look sweet? I mean, isn't that much nicer on the shelf than it was all blue, just dipped in blue, whatever. But, and then I gave it a coat of, uh, you know, polished and waxed it. So I really love this. Ben, uh, thanks so much. It's such a beautiful piece, isn't it? And uh, this is actually my first <laughs> miniature anvil. I, I don't like collecting things that are quote unquote collectible, but this is just so beautiful. Thanks again, Ben. You know, funny thing is uh, before I heard some music playing in the living room and I went in there and there was Teddy on my computer watching Ben Maul's tool videos. Unbelievable, this guy. He uh, he knows how to operate the computer. These these kits today, right? They're, they're amazing with the computers. Anyway, I told you it was going to be a short one today. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. And this is what I mean by when you get that uh, heavy winds, when you still have leaves on the trees. See, we lost a few branches here. Nothing serious yet. Well, this storm did a lot of damage because, like I said, the leaves are on the trees. You can see here my 100-year-old maple dropped a big branch on top of the uh, wires. That's not a good thing. And uh, called Con Ed. They're busy, but they'll get here. But all is still good in the basement, at least. That's one good thing.